this is guitarist Dennis Tafe, and I'm in my home studio, and I want to welcome you to the making of my 338th album called Modern Rock Guitar, Volume 338, Inner Metropolis. And real quickly, for those who aren't familiar with my music, or my approach um, to guitar, obviously I'm a guitarist, and uh, I play guitar, and guitar loops done on the fly, which is basically where I play something, uh, record part of it with a pedal board, and it starts to loop, and then I layer additional tracks on top of it. Um, I do that live, and I also emulate bass on guitar and other instruments on guitar, make it sound like it. Um, and my focus um, is basically new age instrumental rock guitar, if there's such a thing. Basically you'd find it in contemporary instrumental, you know, it would be a category like that. Uh, it's not quite ambient, it's not quite new age, it's not quite rock. Uh, for me, my concentration is um, film music, in particular, like uh, music that you would find in a scene in a film, you know, um, creating moods and atmospheres, you know. Um, some of my favorite films are because of the music of the film, rather than the, the film itself. Um, okay, and I guess I should say, uh, this is uh, volume 338, so it's my uh, 338th album. Uh, I, my first album was in 1999, and from album one to about 200 uh, were rock albums. Uh, certainly a different style altogether, really. And then um, from volume 200 to now, which is 338, um, is a different style. Uh, again, focusing on what I consider uh, film music. Um, okay, so let's talk about this album. Um, it has eight tracks. And um, I guess we can take a look at the cover first. And uh, the cover was again a uh, basically a public domain uh, photo, really. Not really a photo, but a, a picture, or basically I just added. Uh, you know, if somebody was doing an advertisement for a concert or something, you know, in the future and so on. I'm sure they'd have, you know, LEDs and all kinds of lights and stuff. In any case, um, I really liked the picture. I thought it was kind of futuristic looking. Uh, and so it fit for this album pretty well. Now, um, I guess there are some things I should say of, about this album. Um, one, I like it very much. I very much like the content of the album. Uh, it definitely creates moods and atmospheres, has specific themes, and uh, I'm a big fan of um, old, uh, you know, early 80s film soundtracks, you know, you had uh, John Carpenter, you had um, Tangerine Dream doing soundtracks and so on. Uh, along that line, you had Philip Glass, Michael Field doing Tubular Bells and that kind of thing. Uh, in any case, I'm a big fan of that kind of music, so uh, I tried to incorporate that, it certainly influenced uh, 
my musical style in a way. And let me tell you something. For a guitarist, it is very difficult. <laughs> and I don't mean technically. In fact, it's the opposite. Um, as a guitar player, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, when I was growing up learning guitar, which was in the mid-80s, you know, where basically all guitars were judged by how fast they could play. Seems ridiculous, but it's the truth, uh, you know, how fast you could solo and that kind of thing. Uh, and in fact, you know, um, how technical you could be. They would call it technical playing. And, and, and honestly, it wasn't until I let that go and just said, you know, this is stupid. Um, you know, one, it's not musical. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. It's, you know, it's fun. It's fun to play for a while, you know, or even to listen to for maybe, you know, five, ten minutes. But after that, you know, it's just... Um, not very enjoyable, but it's very hard. Just um, ego-wise, you know, you want you want to show people, oh, look, I can play, and I can play well, and so on. Um, but you really, as a musician, you have to let that go, you know, and, and really um, play. Uh, for the for the song, if you like, or you know, uh, play for the for the music that you create. You know, and it doesn't matter. You know how technical it is, or how much music theory is behind it, or how fast you're playing, all that kind of thing. You know, it's just um, is it musical and does it sound good to your ears? You know. Um, so I, I, I think I'm really lucky in a sense that um, I was able to reinvent my style, um, you know, since the first album in 1999, you know, and then doing those um, 200 rock albums. Um, and it wasn't until I really let go of these kinds of things. Um, that really allowed me to to create music I really, really enjoy. Um, well, you know, I can listen to it all day if I want to. I can, uh, you know, listen to it while I'm driving or going to sleep, that kind of thing. Uh, just a really enjoyable, um, kind of almost meditative, relaxing um, music, you know. And it really changed my perception of musicians and guitarists and so on. Look, if you go on uh, YouTube, for example, I mean, you know, you can bring up, you know, probably a million guitarists, you know, who can play super fast solos and those kinds of things and consider some, themselves very good at the instrument. And for me... Uh, they may be very good technically, but I'm more interested in the music that they create, you know, and whether it's enjoyable or not, or whether it's musical, you know. And I, I guess to each his own, but for me, most of the time I find that it's not very, you know, not very musical or, you know, not certainly uh, one of my favorites, you know, in any case. So if you're one of those players out there, you know, really take a listen, you know, to your, to the actual music you create, you know, rather than guitar techniques and, you know, that's true. I, you know, I used to read in, in magazines and these professional guitarists would say, look, when you're practicing, right, spend 
maybe 5% of your practice time on technique and the rest of the time on, on uh, are creating songs and that kind of thing. And, uh, and now I, I realize why, you know. Um, you know, because whether you have great technique or not, if your music is, you know, generic or, uh, you know, not very musical, it's, it kind of misses the point, doesn't it? Anyway, so I, I think I've been very fortunate in that sense. Um, also, I, I have to admit, I find it much harder uh, to, uh, you know, when I'm improvising. Yeah, because uh, I, I should mention that, I guess. Um, all the tracks on the CD are performed live in the studio by me. And basically, I basically just put, you know, a microphone, I use two amplifiers, put a microphone in front of each and record and that's it. No overdubs later or anything like that. Um, so really what you hear is what I performed live in the studio and it's all improvised on the spot. I mean, from the very beginning. Basically, I get a, an idea, right? I say, well, that sounds kind of neat. Um, you know, and I look and see, you know, what it is I'm playing, and then find parts that complement or may complement the original parts I'm playing and build off of it. And you can guide it in a certain directions because it's improvised. Uh, that doesn't mean just lay down, you know, <coughs> anything. You know, I try to, um, you know, fo follow some music theory and so on. And I guess that's kind of the trick to it, you know, is to make a sound like it was a structured, prepared track, even though in reality it's um, improvised. And what's great about that is <coughs> when you're improvising, um, you really, it'll take you in musical directions that you would have never thought of. And, you know, you can fall flat on your face where things don't work quite as well, or uh, you may find, you know, magical musical moments that you couldn't have really created any other way. <coughs> and for me, uh, you know, this is uh, part of the reason why I've created so many albums, you know. Uh, because I'm always, uh, you know, excited to see in what direction, you know, your improvisation is taking you and so on, and exploring those different sounds and things. Okay. And uh, I have to admit, you know, um, it's, it's really hard um, especially in the online guitar community, you know, to see a, all these guitars noodling away and that that is how they're judging guitarists, you know, is by, uh, you know, they're noodling, basically how fast they can play and how technical and so on. You know, it's ridiculous. There should be. You know, I really like uh, the music that this guitarist creates. You know, that's the way it should be, I think, personally. Because um, I'm sorry, for me, I don't care how technical the guitarist is, how fast he can solo and so on. You know, if the music is crap, you know, it's just not enjoyable to listen to. Or not even crap, but well done, but generic, you know. Generic, I mean, uh, and I hate to say it, but a lot of these guitars sound alike, you know. 
Uh, yeah, it's kind of a shame, really. I mean, each guitar should have its own style, but I think musical approach as well. Anyway, besides that, so for me, uh, this is why one of the reasons why I like this album is I really let that go and went for the you know, musicality, if you like, if that's even a word. Uh, you know, basically trying to come up with musical tracks. And the fact that, that it reminds me very much, or is influenced, you know, by 80s film soundtracks. You know, like uh, Giorgio Morricone, you know, the Cat People, Midnight Express, and so on. Tangerine Dream, you know, the Miracle Mile, um, Thief, of course, Risky Business type things. Um, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, John Carpenter, you know, the Escape from New York, the thing, you know, that kind of thing. You know, um, and then Philip Glass, you know, things like Pawagoski, and um, also did some videos where, you know, he would speed up the film and play these repetitive, you know, things and layer them and so on. So really, these are my influences. Um, and I, since I've done that, really, I've been rewarded uh, musically, you know, uh, and probably saved myself from carpal tunnel syndrome, too, uh, you know. I mean, I hate for the, these guitarists out there, you know, these kids that are hurting themselves, <laughs> you know, because they're trying to play so fast and so on, and that'd be a real shame. Uh, but musically, uh, makes a big difference. And, um, notice that a lot of these, uh, uh, composers that I mentioned, um, use keyboards and synthesizers. And, um, you know, I'm not a synthesizer player at all. I, I kind of like synthesizers. I like the sound of them. You know, I much prefer guitar. And I th that was always my dream was to do that kind of music, but on guitar, you know. And so this is kind of what I'm going for. Um, and luckily for me, they, um, you know, I, I have some keyboard sounds, uh, but it's really, it's all done on guitar. <coughs> and the nice thing is, uh, it's not MIDI guitar, you know, where you, you're you triggering a keyboard sound or something like that. Um, these are totally organic sounds, you know, just from my pedals, and they're not, not, not MIDI guitar. <laughs> yeah, which I, you know, to me it's kind of like using samples, you know, it's not, not organic for me. All right, anyway, let's, let's move on, let's get to, to this album, and track one is called Transport. Uh... Uh, very much I named that track, kind of, it reminds me of, um, uh, you know, the Kraftwerk albums, you know, Audubon and those kinds of things. So I call it Transport for that reason. And you'll hear here um, that I'm using a lot of delayed guitar, repeating patterns, and then the emulated... Um, keyboard sound done on guitar. So let's take a listen to that. So 
there's a repeating pattern. And you heard this little emulated keyboard right here. are layered, you see, yeah, and here's the bass emulation coming in, for me this is, I love this kind of music, you know, very much. Seven mark. It's near the end here. So there, I've added another layer of pattern playing. It's, it's actually on the the uh, treble pickup, and usually I, I do pattern playing on the neck pickup. However, um, for this track, I switched guitars uh, from a Yamaha Revstar guitar, which I usually use, um, to my old Parker guitars, and I haven't used it in quite a while, so so I forgot to switch the the pickup, so it gave it a kind of a brighter sound. In any case, that sets up the album and the, the main themes of the albums, you know. Um, and to me, it's always, when I do these albums, it's as if I'm doing a film soundtrack. Let's go on to track two here. Uh, seven minutes and 37 seconds. Let's take a listen to that. And that one's called Coastal View. So there are some chord voicings, and then a layer of repeated, you know, pattern playing, and then the bass line. And what I like about the bass line, it's not a constant bass line, you know, it's not it's not a da 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 you know on the root note at all. It's kinda like this little da 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 Yeah. So I really like the emulated bass guitar on this track. And 
to do that kind of a bass playing where you're playing a pattern rather than a solid so you got to be real careful about your timing yeah so there's basically chord voicing putting a little fill in between the chord voicings you know. and here I'm always trying to come up with new chord voicings um, so instead of playing just a, a bar chord you know maybe I'll play uh, you know a note on the sixth string a note on the fourth string and a note on the second string for example would create a chord voicing you know, so they're all over the neck and they'll give you kind of a different sound okay let's fast forward uh, let's go to the I don't know five minute ten second mark suspended chords playing 
sounds. Um, because to me it sounds very much like Tangerine Dream kind of thing.
three minute and 56 second mark. Pretty long track at the nine minutes. So let's take a listen to that one. Some 
sometimes they're playing dotted eighth notes. Other times, you know, it's just half notes. So here we've got the dotted eighth. guitar sound we haven't heard in a while. It's a harmonized guitar. <coughs> so you play a note, it harmonizes automatically with a, another note um, that it creates on the guitar. So here's a looped layers of those repeating patterns. And here I'm putting in the bass, emulated bass line. Let's fast forward a bit to a four minute mark. and 49 seconds long and we'll take a listen to it here <clears throat> That's the uh, eighth and last track um, to this album, and I very much like the overall um, themes that all of the tracks 
you know, when you listen to them together, it really creates a theme that links the tracks together. Um, yeah, I like the musical content um, so much for this album that I'm thinking of getting some, uh, you know, some CDs made of it, you know, so it's just not a digital download. And I haven't done that for ages, you know. Um, so in any case, uh, for me, this is a really rewarding musically, you know, to do an album like this. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye.